Well, the former fine, so they just tried to straggle in. Um, if they would hear me, I would then speak to Mungle, um, Pablo, and some of my monotone. So if you can understand me, can you let me know? Um, I'll do what I can. But yes, I like it. Um, so I'm Dan Tallarico. Go for your music plug. Um, I'm Dan Tallarico. I'm the social media and PR specialist for printing the industry of America. Um, I'm just going to say a little bit about that. Um, there are some things they share in Pittsburgh, uh, but national organization. And what they do, um, and I help them do, is sort of they have been, so if you're a printer, we make sure you're doing the best job as a printer. So if you have printing problems, any problems, you know, if you're paying too much for paper, we help you with that. <coughs> um, so I'm there doing social media. And um, this session, if you want, want to integrate social media into a business that has none, um, so we'll mostly sort of talk about trial and error that I face um, integrating it into printing with America. Before I came, had baby with a dedicated person there. Um, so I'll be talking a lot about that and how we're doing, and then I'll sort of lay out some of the red tape and things that I had no idea even existed, and some of the important items that sort of didn't seem so important at first. Um, and I think when we go through this, um, if you guys have any questions, you know, raise your hand, but it's relevant to the topic at hand. Um, if you have like an overall broad question, I'll be with you the end. But if we're going through and there's something you need to ask about, don't hesitate to raise your hand. And uh, hopefully I'll see you soon. <coughs> so, any questions thus far? Perfect. Off to a great start. I like this detail. Are you confident? <laughs> All right. So, these are some things I'll, I'll cover. Um, sort of what goals to set, what goals to use, who's going to be in charge of this fiasco, um, how you're going to measure success, and um, sort of how you create social media policies. Um, something that is sort of very important, especially from an HR perspective, which I don't have, but my HR person does. <laughs> and um, also, I can't stress enough that these are my own views and opinions. I like my job. So, <laughs> all right, so part one, setting goals. Um, setting goals is absolutely probably the first thing you can do. I recommend if your business is trying to start social media, um, you need somewhere to go, you need somewhere to drive, you need a destination. Um, and then once you define those goals, they really help you for a customized social media experience. Um, so, you know, you kind of want to sit down and ask yourself, what do you want social media to do for you? Um, do you want to spread information that your business has? Do you want to do better customer service? Do you want to showcase your business? Do you want to connect with clients or customers? Do you want to build a community? Um, you could pick one of these things. You could pick one that's not on this list. You could pick all of them. You could be very ambitious. Um, but just, it's just very important to look at your goals because once you have your goals set, you know, like it's a goal you have. And there are a million social media tools out there. And so, there's a couple of them. Talk about that. Um, so, the main one we use at Printing Industry of America, um, bless you, are Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. And um, we've had varying degrees of success in all of them. And um, so, just to do a quick rundown, I'm not going to go too deep in any of these just because I'm kind of assuming you guys going to know what you're doing with those and how they work. Um, but Twitter, uh, for us, has been great like spreading links. Um, from our blog, and we have a, a magazine and a, a ton of resources, so we can use the link up there. Um, it's great for using that audience, as anyone knows. Mm -hmm. The power of retweets is a phenomenal, you know, thousands more people could see that, it's like wildfire. Um, it could also do stuff with a service, which I'll talk about. Um, <laughs> um, so, one of the things that I have is that we, there is a president decided to stop printing the federal register, which is fine. Um, but, you know, we are basically, you know, for printing the industry. It's a record of printing evangelists. And so we made a video of my, you know, um, we got to try and see if we got to go to the federal print. Um, we saw it, and so we did a video of my, and, you know, it was sort of polarizing because, you know, on one hand, yeah, he was printing something that is available digitally and what people access, 
the other hand, is the story to sort of, you know, create a losing job and share a better way to sort of go about it. Um, and so, you know, it's good thing I put her in place because, you know, we said this, this video out and we're out doing it in the mail for our members and the really. And people are talking to our company, like, you know, I don't understand, like, the suit doesn't make sense, you know, it's, it's sort of like very one sided and everything. And like, we were there <laughs> to engage them on Twitter, but like, hey, you know, thanks for watching. Um, why don't you talk about it? Why don't we talk about this issue together? And instead of them just, you know, deciding they hated us, they gave us an opportunity to sort of get in there and, you know, stay friends with them. And um, so, you know, Twitter is great. Um, you know, Facebook is great to create community. It's the perfect hub, the way you can customize Facebook nowadays, but the way you can make it your own website if you want to. Um, you can almost make that your main hub page. Um, YouTube, you know, we have all our videos there. Um, and LinkedIn, you know, I think that we get enough attention, but it's great for like business to business situations <clears throat> because uh, we care to a lot of businesses already. And so we have a lot of experts, and we have like a we have a screen group that we um we share a lot of info with, and um you know we sort of engage other businesses there. I think we might like this things like that, and um it's been pretty this time pretty good feedback like there for us. Um you know share share networking. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of the story of how we got to where we are today. Um, and you know it's a great story to hear about how you know it's a great story to hear about how you know it's a great story to hear about how yeah, Tumblr is awesome, but maybe your business is going to need Tumblr. Maybe your business is going to need Twitter. Um, you sort of want to figure out what you want to do. And it's okay if you don't have a Facebook page. Uh, the Andy is going to do for the Facebook audience right here, you know, it's what it is. Um, but you might not need it. You know, so it's so It's just you don't have the resources to get that dedicated. You don't want to throw yourself to the same. Um, so you're going to find the right tool for the right job. Which sounds like something else. A plumber or something would say. I don't know. Um, so part two. So once you have sort of the idea of what you're going to do, how will you control this content? Um, so, you know, one of the most important things is, you know, how does your company know about posting content? Who's going to do it? Are you going to have a dedicated person? Are you going to have a dedicated pool of people? Um, are you going to have various employees posting from their own account? You know, it's going to be more of a, a segmented type thing where it's sort of haphazard, you know, maybe some a staff will sell something, maybe they won't. Um, as soon as America, you know, they brought me on to handle all their social media. So we are following the first one, so we get the day first routine. Um, everything that goes out through the screen, screen banner, goes through me. And, um, you know, that's great because we get consistent message. Um, I sort of know what's going on at all times, you know, and I work close with the marketing team, and I'm in the marketing team, um, so that we, I know what they're doing with, with all the departments, and I can help, you know, use social media to enhance that. Um, if you do it the other way, where, you know, maybe four or five people have access to their account, um, and they're just sort of posting at, you know, whenever they want, it can go, um, it's a good thing, but, you know, you also get a lot of perspectives, and it's a lot less work for the person. So, there are pros and cons to both. I know there are some businesses, um, Starbucks, might be this. Um, they, I think one of their Twitter accounts is, uh, is here between like maybe five or four different uh, employees. And what they do is they tag their tweets with like, hey, you know, this copy you had was awesome. Sign down, right? Like, oh my goodness, tell us the best company ever. Um, just, uh, um, which is, which is fine. You know, I, I don't, I'm not going to say which way to do things, but you can think about um, at the opposite because changing that later on can be very difficult. Um, so yeah, you kind of want to understand who's in charge of this. Is it going to be someone's job? Is it someone's side job that they might forget about after a month or two? So, and then you want to, um, you know, your business is a brand. And um, how you, how are you representing it online is very important. So here's two examples. Um, who left? And is, uh, hey, um, that's our Twitter account. And then you have both and start access to each other. Um, and like, there are pros and cons to both. And this is something we talked about doing um, when I first came on board was, you know, do we post from Dan's perspective? As a Dan, do we post from Dan Crimson Street? And um, without the talking, I do want to let her start doing it. And so a little bit of trouble. 
And, um, but I've learned, which is why we call laughing about it. Um, and so we went with the, the official branding. So anything that comes up next to our company, you know, it's from Payton to America. It's official. It's usually the, it is true. There's no great John here. It's not someone's perspective or opinion. It is just it's that. Um, it's sort of, you know, sometimes it's stuck um, in this whole, this, this whole section because you can't be, you know, hilarious or cheesy or, you know, you can't be too fun. There's some way there, but um, for the most part, it's kind of can be semi dry but not all. Um, but uh, on the other hand, so that there, um, they have, there's a face there that someone that you can connect with and you can ask them questions if their personal account. Um, they can be called accountable at the same time, you know, they have some leeway there because that they are a human being after all. Um, pretty much it's not really human beings, they're the human behind it, but you can logo there to bring it to America. Um, so, you know, it's just kind of like how you want your present to have a very strong brand. Do you want it to be someone sort of pale about working there? Um, so, we went with that, so that it was, you know, they embrace social media pretty well. Um, and it's working great for them, and it's also working great for us also. So, something to think about. Um, any questions so far? Awesome. Alright, so, who's approving the content that goes out there? Um, you know, as I said, I'm a dedicated person to social media at Great News in America, but, um, my boss, <coughs> uh, Vice President Marketing, sees everything that goes out beforehand. So I run everything by her uh, because she's going to come along and I have, and she knows what may be a good idea or a bad idea. You know, she knows that she's going to tip off someone that might not, you know, this is good. Um, so she um, approves everything. And so, hey, you know, maybe don't write about this. Maybe you should reward this this way. Um, because prayers can be happy sometimes, um, the way you describe them. And so, you know, it's good to have someone else look at that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So like a day in the life of Dan, um, I get in the office and you know I sort of think about usually being in from like five posts a day and then um, two posts in the same post two or three times throughout the day. So you know we're suddenly putting out like five posts a day and um, you know in the morning. I, um, I break them down, you know, get them to finish some of the birds. And she gets back to me, um, says, hey, you know, it's okay, you know, maybe not okay. 99% of the time, everything I send to her is fine. But, um, you know, it's good to have someone helping the company. And much like your the vice president of the little company is the one, you know, behind the social media. Um, it's good to have someone else look at it. Just for, just, I don't want to do something that gets my company in trouble. And so... It's good to have her look at that stuff. And, um, yeah, so I send her stuff, and then once you approve it, I post it throughout the day. And, um, Sorry. No problem. She's very good. Very good. Well, <laughs> right. Well, see, this is... I mean, that's, that's a great point, but that's, um, that's something that, you know, we're sort of doing that with, is that, well, someone has to prove it, and so there's that extra step that you have to take before you could cheat. Um, and so Twitter, it's been, it's been sort of difficult, because, you know, that relies so much on, like, that very moment that you want to be there. And um, for the most part, you know, that's why we put a limit, but sometimes I'll just reply without going to her and tell her. Um, just something very innocent, like, you know, thank you very much, you know, like, thanks for receiving that, how we appreciate it, but we lose a lot of conversation there that we can't be taking advantage of, because of the process that we're having to do. Um, so, on one hand, you know, everyone's happy, on the other hand, uh, our Twitter is a little bit tender, because of it, um, which I'm okay with, yeah.
Yeah. Um, or something like that? Is that something that you recommend? Um, you know, that, that's a great idea, sort of have this, like, a boilerplate. Okay, like, if someone says this, then this. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's a great suggestion. It's something that we do. Um, I think something small, just like, thank you. Um, I sort of handle that myself without someone else looking through that because it's just not the scenario that person is saying. Um, which is great, but um, <laughs> but yeah, it's great to have that first thing because um, you know once it goes out, and I think because it's, it's so important to be able to have that freedom to sort of have that conversation, um, and that's something we do with just being that friend there, um, and that's sort of the decision we made, and you know people don't see it as something that could be like, hey, how was your day? How was your dinner? Anyway, you know, um, so. We don't run into that problem very often. Okay. That's most of people being like, this is a great resource, and we get a lot more. I guess, instead of a reply, we get like a retweet, I guess, which almost gets a trade off. Like, we we're seeing a sort of um, a news resource. You know, you don't really, you wouldn't reply like CNN or something like that. Um, it's sort of happens to us. But yeah, um, if you're going to do that, maybe I'll feel that. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, George. Twitter already. Okay. And, uh, 
But um, it's, it's something very interesting to the building of community around me um, by offering for a many time to be set aside to do for a
for other people on a guest post. And um, another important thing about a blog um, hyphen is that you kind of want, the way I see the way we use social media is it's, it's very uh, circular. And so maybe you start off on Twitter as like, hey, you know, here's a blog post about it. Um, and then go to the blog, and it's Reddit is talking about easy ink and using problems. <laughs> Great stuff. Um, there's a video there and sort of explaining, okay, hey, this is how you know you might have a new problem, you do a new problem. Um, and then, you know, there's YouTube and they put them in YouTube and, you know, they have other videos there. So they go to your YouTube channel and say, oh, yeah, look at Frank's YouTube channel, it's amazing. It's the greatest YouTube channel ever. Um, people will look at that and then, you know, maybe at the end of the video, it's like, you know, from there's some Facebook, Facebook account of Frank's YouTube And so they sort of get they, they get a sample of all your social media offerings in sort of one little um, Hebrew sentence, which I think is sort of why it's important to have a blog or Facebook or somewhere like a hub of content that sort of feeds into all your other stuff. So, something to keep in mind. All right. So, like I said before, adding social media, your marketing mix. Um, something we do that, that is sort of successful is um, you can all let me know. Um, members and things like that. And what we've been up to is asking questions on community on our Twitter. Okay, what do you have problems with things or things or something like that? Um, and we can take that question. We'll do that. And uh, we'll have like a video of a And we'll send it out in emails and sort of, um, that makes the email a little more dynamic, a little more fun, um, to to eye, things like that. And also, you know, Cross-posting stuff um, a whole time of the day on different social channels. So, for instance, let's say we can have out on, it's just fun. Like, uh, you do it, you can talk it. Um, let's say, you know, we discovered something new in the same thing. Um, we'll try to press these out. And then, you know, we have that on our blog, and we've got someone talking about why it's important on our blog. Um, and then, you know, we post things all the time today because we're in a national organization in their different time zones. But maybe, you know, something that is five our time might not be relevant to some money. <laughs> um, and we also have a couple of international um, members. And so, posting different times per day, um, different people are going to see it in different time zones to be aware of. I don't know how big anyone's going to be here. But, um, we're going to keep in mind. And, um, there's nothing wrong with posting on Twitter the same thing a couple times a day. Everyone forgets about what you saw on Twitter that morning anyway. Um, so, part four is, um, what is success in social media? Um, this is something I sort of started with initially, because they're saying in social media and PR, and how do I prove to them that I'm doing an okay job? You know, like, why, why, why are they spending their money on Why are they investing in this? Um, so I found a couple ways to sort of uh, help them know that I'm doing a great job. Um, you know, of course, with analytics, you know, you, you could see if you are uh, on Google Analytics, if your website is. Um, you could see how people are finding their content, finding their site. Um, if you're the number one source, if you're number three, um, it sort of gives you a lot of benefits for that. Um, something we have a uh, link partner, uh, is to have. And, um, we use those and everything put out. We actually have our own pretty much these link partners. Um, but Google, um, if you have a deal, I think, and if you go to two.google, um, <laughs> you can, um, put up your own nice phone number. They don't track, let's say, like, if you're clicking on it, it's not true, but, um, when people are clicking on it, um, are you, like, what device they're using? It's mobile, like, what, what browser, things like that. Um, and what's also great is that it will generate QR codes, um, for you. So, if you, you want to uh, your friend something, um, and you want to print out QR code that uh, you are out looking, we'll generate one for you and just post out. Um, it's great because if you're printing something and sending out QR code, you just track, you really want to track how many people are clicking on that. You can just want to post that until uh, you just provide that for you. Um, another thing we've been using as sort of a metric is uh, followers or like increasing. Um, Facebook Insights is phenomenal. They give you uh, a wide range of tools. If you get that Facebook page, if you're an admin, you can view Insights and give you uh, a wonderful graph, lots of colors. Now, um, something to look at. 
Um, but also, it's something to keep in mind is, is you type it for um, Twitter, it's D W I C T E R, um, and it'll tell you when someone stops following it. Um, and something that I've sort of been keeping an eye on recently is okay, we've looked it up in two months, like why would someone stop following us? Um, and so you kind of want to understand why they would stop following you. And I'm going to okay, I posted about this thing too many times, maybe in the day, and I lost four followers. I've never happened before, I'm going to be wrong. It keeps you to adjust your game plan as you go. Um, and then, you know, word of mouth, if you go to, you know, we just had a big uh, print conference in Chicago. Great time. Get you all there. Um, but people came up to me and were like, hey, you know, I like what you're doing on Facebook. I like what you're doing in the audio room. You guys are doing a great job. I like the company you're getting. And so, uh, meeting people one on one, and hearing about word of mouth um, is another way to track how you're doing. So, metric success, so important. Um, yes. Um, 
Um, and so, you know, I, I help educate them on, you know, this is why prayer is important. This is why we're doing this. This is why it's important. This is why faith is important, you know. This is what we're doing on LinkedIn. And just sort of letting them know um, what I was doing and how they could be involved, you know, it's very helpful because you walk into an environment where you no know, one understands what you're doing. You walk into the gym, like, oh, they're saying social media, whatever, whatever that is. Um, they don't get it, and you know it's not a fun place to be in. Um, so once you sort of educate them, and maybe you know take their interest a little bit, and they want to get involved, you know that makes your job, you know, even so you know, that much easier because hey, you know they want to give me content, I'm looking for content, it's perfect message in heaven. Um, and the more involved they are, the more active the community can be. And um, you know something else, like at first. When I started here, I don't know if it's five days now, but I'm going to talk about this now. Um, is that no one else has Twitter accounts? Um, and like, they would just say, like, no one, none of the staff has Twitter accounts, but, um, you know, we, we don't frown on what we would encourage them to Twitter. Um, but now there's a lot more people using Twitter. Um, and, you know, they're also on our Facebook page getting involved. And, like, because they're the ones that can answer the question, you know, what have a social media specialist. I don't know too much about the research and stuff that we do, but they know they're the experts. Um, and so, I'm afraid to get involved and then go on the Facebook page. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm a uh, senior research technician here. Um, I'm going to ask questions for a while, or if they have a few questions, they can answer So, um, it's, it's very important to educate your employees or staff on social media and why they should be involved. Um, and then we do have a social media policy. Um, it's nothing too crazy. It's mostly like some giveaway company secrets. Um, don't talk about things that you do. Um, don't slander anyone. No cussing, things like that. Um, and with this sort of laying the ground rules, and also um, just years ago, uh, social media, things like that. You know, just like common internet curves, you know, you have kind of things like that. Um, if you are curious, you know, what social media policy looks like. Um, you can contact me, and I can send you what we have at the industry if you want to model for what all of us. I'm quite kind of going on the internet, but how I can do that. So that's about it. If there's any questions or comments. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> These are the kind of sites you set. That's all the time you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're back. Um, well, want the money, great, work on that Um, you know, I just, we just encourage them, you can't force anyone to be doing social media, um, no one's going to come to anything that you have to. Um, as far as the hard questions, you know, it's just maybe get your HR person involved, and then, you know, create a social media policy, and in that policy, sort of explain why social media is important, um, and then, you know, have your HR person distribute that, like, hey, you know, this is a new policy that you need to look over, you know, take a look that way. Um, if you can't otherwise, it still looks like if they don't want to be part of social media, what can you do is that sort of, you know, once you get in there and you develop a plan, and that plan begins to work, uh, people might want off to it, uh, which is something I've discovered, because everyone's like, oh, video. Watch those, it's and uh, they're bringing results, and now they want to do more and more videos. So you just have to prove yourself um, sometimes, and so that's the advice I would give you. Um, any other questions? Yeah. Um, in terms of what you're posting on Twitter or Facebook, you find it works better to post different content on each? So um, there is some stuff that I keep on Twitter that I don't put on Facebook, but you could get most of the content um, in both places. Um, I, yeah, because I don't, you know, like I don't care what sort of social uh, calls people are using. I want them to get the best experience from training with you, wherever they are, like whatever they prefer. So I wouldn't pull that content um, specifically, but you know, some content might do better in some things than others. Like uh, on Facebook, we have 
Um, it's more like the younger people and things like that, and so they're interested in like, the technology things like that. Um, and so we have a lot more information. So, you know, it's, um, you kind of have to see what people prefer, but in the long run, like, we don't like who can punt in our Twitter account, you know. Right, that's right. Right. No. no, I mean, it might, it's not something I'd explore, but I feel like information needs to be out there freely and right. readily available, and so I would encourage you to put it out there. Actually, not awful, and you can set it in, in, in that way, or you can schedule 
not on that computer. It's just a screen and it's not as much live or whatever. But I know if I'm trying to do something at work, like I can't get into it at all. Yeah. At work. So that is not going to happen if I'm not going to be able to do it. Uh, but I can get it on my phone. And so sometimes I'll mail myself the link from my phone so that I can cut and paste it <laughs> on the computer. <laughs> I'm not supposed to work when I'm not at work. Right. So I'm sorry, I'm not going to work, but I'm not going to work, okay. I'm obviously here working, and I'm going to work here, but... Yeah, and it's just a tough situation you're in, because, you know, the great thing also is that, you know, you get to find some relevant things and share those, and... There's, like, a design fund, or something, and it's like, 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 you know, 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 you I'm 